<laughs> everybody. Good morning from the Hamakua coast on the big island. Uh, there are no chickens here uh, by my grandmother's house, but look what we found behind us. There is a flock of sheep behind me, uh, which is very reassuring because if the sheep and the goats are separated, I'm really happy that because I'm with them, I get to go to the right and I'm with the sheep. So it's very satisfying. Anyhow, uh, this is not chicken chat because there are no chickens. Um, therefore, we're going to uh, welcome you all on December 9th, 2021 to Flock Flap. Flock Flap, everybody. So welcome to Flock Flap from Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. Uh, anyway, the, the, the opportunities for cattiness this morning are endless. Uh, but in all seriousness, I would like to tell you uh, that our in outdoor Holy Eucharist is at 5 p.m. on Saturday out in the courtyard. We're back in the church on Sunday at 9 a.m. with live music and congregational singing as long as we uh, remember to wear our masks and social distance. Um, this past Sunday it also turned into dancing uh, at the end of the service. It was great. We will have our virtual Sunday worship premiering at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning on Facebook Live or YouTube, but you can view it any time after 7 a.m. Please remember uh, that uh, during the week we have daily Compline during Advent at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live, centering prayer at 4 p.m. via Zoom, men's Bible study, at 7 a.m. Wednesdays uh, via Zoom, Anglican Rosary on Wednesdays at 12 noon, Facebook Live, and Thursday, the Women's Bible Study at 12 noon via Zoom. We have a number of birthdays this week. Uh, Jeannie Abe, Ria Bumanglag, Maisie Tam, Rani Aspilla, Brian Schuster, Merle Suzuki Kaluakini, Benelin Bumanglag, and Justin Valle. We don't have any wedding anniversaries, but we do remember the deaths of Veronica Fukami on the 13th and Michael Teruya on the 8th. Uh, we also uh, have a number of people on our pastoral care prayer list, so uh, let's pray for those people. Amy, Barbara, Bill, Blandina, Catalina, Charmaine, Charlesta, Chris, Cynthia, Cora S., David, Dixie L., Dolores, Donna, Elmer, Effie, Eric, Ernesto, Filomeno, Fred, Jacinta, Jim, Joseph, Joyce, Juanita, Judy, Kaili, Kevin, Christy, Leilani, Lucille, Lynn, Maggie, Marilyn, Maisie, Melanie, Nelson, Nick, Paul, Paula, Paulino, Peter P., Phil, Pilar, Randall, Samantha, Sana, Sonia, Shirley, Sparky, Tomo, Trip, Wendy. Most holy and gracious God, we ask your prayers of healing upon all those for whom we pray this morning, as well as for those who need our prayers but are unnamed and unknown to us. May your healing love descend upon all people and may your peace which passes all understanding be in everyone's hearts, bodies, and minds. Amen. Uh, for the month of December, uh, we do have Isaiah 111. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. So uh, please remember that. If you can't remember, it's on the Christmas card. By the way, the new Christmas cards are ready with new 
Bible verses for 2022. Uh, I'm going to ask Cora to pick them up today and we'll get them mailed out to you. The good news, everybody, is that the memory verses are much shorter. So um, anyhow, uh, be on the lookout for that. A huge, huge thanks to all of you who have made a pledge to the parish for 2022. And if you haven't yet, it's not too late. Uh, you can drop your pledge card in, mail it in, or put it in the plate on Sunday morning. And please let us know if you need a pledge card. And as always, as we're opening back up again, we're looking for people to serve on the altar guild as acolytes and as ushers also readers uh, intercessors and please know that the diocese of hawaii requires that anyone in a volunteer position at the parish needs to be vaccinated the shepherd's staff will be coming out it's ready to it's out it's ready to go uh so um you know coming from the pasture with the sheep i tell you about the shepherd staff so be on the lookout for that the uh, shepherd staff has um, some important uh things of note in it first of all there is an estate sale uh, at the parish hall on december 11th the day after tomorrow saturday from eight to two all proceeds go to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. Uh, and boy, let me tell you, there's some wonderful things in there. So please come and take a look. Also, the Maui Food Bank, their annual food, holiday food drive is happening as we speak. So please bring non-perishable food items to any service. Uh, we have a box uh, that we will have in front of the altar for that purpose. So uh, please bring that in any time for those in need. Also, please know that financial donations can be made online. Also, the Kahaleokeola Kahale Keola Homeless Shelter uh, has their annual drive for Christmas gifts for residents of the Wailuku Homeless Shelter. Uh, to each gift donation, we ask that you attach a card that says either male or female and the age range, age range of the gift. You can bring it to any service or to the office. They will be delivered sometime after our Christmas Eve services. Also, we have ordered 30 poinsettias and uh, we will uh, give them to the first 30 people who donate in memory of a loved one. Uh, we do have a sign up in the back of the sanctuary for weekly altar flower offerings, especially if you would like to give in memory of a loved one on their death anniversary. Also, our annual meeting, save the date, January 23rd, 2022, after the nine o'clock service. The details of all these activities are here in the shepherd's staff. Uh, Having said that, please do not follow the shepherd's staff for the Christmas Eve services because as, uh, as we are wont to do, we change things. So we uh, met as a worship committee last week, Saturday, and uh, we decided on the following. Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, 6 p.m., in-person Holy Eucharist in the church with a pageant. If there is any overflow, we'll uh, set it up so that you can watch from the parish hall and we will stream the, live, the service on Facebook. Then at 10.30 p.m. that night, we will have a virtual midnight mass, the Liturgy of the Word with carols. Then on Christmas Day, the 25th, which is a Saturday, we have a 9 a.m. in-person Christmas service in the church sanctuary, Holy Eucharist, but no music. Uh, then at 5 p.m. that day in the courtyard, we have our regular Saturday evening Eucharist. Then Sunday, the 26th, uh, we have a 7 a.m. virtual liturgy of the word on YouTube and Facebook premiere and our nine o'clock regular Sunday Holy Eucharist in the church sanctuary. And then Monday morning, we all collapse. Uh, the, the Christmas pageant will be live once again. Mass will be required of everyone attending and social distancing between cohabiting family groups will be requested. So that's Christmas Eve.
and Christmas Day and Christmas Sunday, which is Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day or Wenceslas Day or something like that. Uh, this past week, the Kaohana Kitchen, uh, San uh, Evangelista and Eddie Evangelista plus Eddie's classmates from St. Anthony's were doing the meal. And uh, this next Sunday will be the Good Shepherd Youth. A uh, cup of cold water is active, making runs again. The runs to Kihei are happening. They need help in terms of people volunteering to do runs and also bringing in donations. While we're at it, please note um, that Trip Lynch, uh, the husband of Deb Lynch, who is um, the, the chair of the board of A Cup of Cold Water, had a bike accident and is home recuperating. So in addition to prayers, uh, lending a hand to uh, give Deb some relief would be a great thing in, at, at Cup of Cold Water. Uh, let's see. Oh, this week we are praying for the Anglican Church of Canada. The Anglican Church of Canada, part of the Anglican Communion and our neighbors to the north. Uh, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we are praying for our chancellors, Wayne Yoshigai and Kevin Herring, uh, who is the vice chancellor. Then uh, we have a number of saints for whom we are praying this week, beginning with Francis de Sales and Jean de Chantal. Jean uh, being Jane is the way we pronounce that. Um, they were two people who reached out to Protestants uh, in Geneva, which was a Calvinist stronghold. Um, and so they, they did a lot of work there, and they are remembered for that in our... Um, in our Lesser Feasts and Fasts. Then we have Lucy, virgin and martyr, who died uh, around 300. Um, she... Okay, so she lived in Syracuse in Sicily, and her name means light. So Saint Lucy is Santa Lucia. Uh, and... Um, her her name light uh, probably accounts for the story that her eyes were put out uh, that was the way that they tortured people they gouged their eyes out um, and uh, yet her she was still able to see you'll also note that depictions of her show her uh, there with a very nice face with nice bright eyes and another set of eyes on a plate uh, those were the ones that got gouged out so in um they they note in the northern parts of the world that her feast uh happens um, near the time when the nights are the longest. So having the light in that context is a wonderful thing. And in Sweden and other Scandinavian countries, they dress up the young girl of the house uh, with candles. I think they wear a crown of candles and they go and they take light to every room of the house. So that's St. Lucy. Then we have John of the Cross, a mystic and reformer. John of the Cross uh, was Spanish, um, and uh, his, it's, it's purported that his father was actually Jewish, and there were a number of Jewish people in Spain. Uh, and then he, he was a student at a, at a Jesuit college and decided to join the Carmelite friars, and um, that's where he met Teresa of Avila, a Carmelite nun. Teresa of Avila was a very strict observer of um, going barefoot. And so they were called the Discal... Oh, the... Oh, Calced, calced or calced. In other words, you you didn't wear fancy shoes. Uh, some people wanted John to go in and um, reform some of that because they thought it was too strict, and he refused, and he was persecuted for that. And um, they they punished him by placing him in a cell of total darkness for nine months. Uh, thus, he came up with the writing, The Dark Night of the Soul. Uh, but we would think of the dark night of the soul being something like evil or negative. He actually saw it pos as a positive thing because in the darkness he grew closer to God. Then we have Saint Nino. 
equal to the Apostles and the Enlightener of Georgia. She was a woman who preached Christianity to Caucasian Iberia, which is um, part of where Georgia is now, also Spain. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's all we'll say about her. Then we have John Horden, a missionary bishop to Canada. Uh, this he he went from um, England to Canada and worked with the native uh, populations there and was instrumental in translating uh, the Bible into Cree um, and evangelized to the folk there in their vernacular. Um, then we have uh, Robert MacDonald. Um, you know, if that name sounds familiar to you, it should because Mark MacDonald, who was is uh, the bishop to uh, the um, the indigenous peoples. Uh, this priest, Robert MacDonald, um, reached out to the Yukon Territory, especially the Ojibwe, and he translated the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer and a lot of hymns into those native languages. Uh, finally, we have Ralph Adams Cram, Richard Upjohn and John Lafarge. The first two were architects, and the second, the third was a an artist who did stained glass windows. Uh, if you have ever been to uh, All Saints Chapel in Sewanee or to St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City in Harlem, those were designed by Ralph Adams Cram. If you've ever been to Trinity uh, Wall Street, that was designed by Richard Upjohn. And if you've ever seen the stained glass windows in Trinity Episcopal Church in Buffalo, there was somewhere before Trinity, uh, Trinity Church in Boston, uh, those were designed by the artist John Lafarge. Quite an extensive list. Okay, we have no chicken of the week, of course, because once again, there are no chicken. But we do have a lot of sheep. Uh, I came out here and uh, actually, initially when, when, when I arrived, the sheep were all by the fence. The minute I opened the car door, they split. Uh, some of them, now they've all gone to way far away, but uh, for a while, there were three or four sheep right up there at the top of the hill. And one of them turned around, looked at me, and then turned back around right toward my face. And so uh, that was her statement of welcome. Uh, she was the only sheep or you uh, whose face I actually saw and interacted with. You know, we looked each other in the eye and then she went, so, because of that, for the Sheep of the Week, we congratulate Attitude. Attitude is the Sheep of the Week, and uh, we thank you for showing us your Attitude, Sheep of the Week uh, Attitude. And uh, with that, we say goodbye from Hamakua. Take care, everybody. See you next week.